Hi all. I had an interesting game last night against Ephemeu of Enfield Chess Club. He's about 140 ECF, but he gave me a really good uh, fight to the end. So it was a French defence. I played my bishop e7 system. And I was a bit uncomfortable, to be honest, with this position, where he simply, um, although he's not moving the f1, he's bringing this knight here. So the other knight's going here, and potentially to f4 if I ever play f6. And I was a bit wary about this. And I played a very controversial decision here. I mean, usually I'd be tempted for just, you know, g5 and g4 and that sort of stuff, and trying to undermine d4 like that. But for some reason, I, I wasn't really in the mood for doing that, and you know, maybe having to play h5 if knight g3 to h5. And you know, I wanted to play a bit more, um, you know, less, I suppose, less creatively, less risky against my lower rated opponent. So I, I actually just sealed up the position with c4, which is a controversial decision in its own right. Right, usually it's a bad idea, especially if you're going to castle. Because then you just, re you know, re by removing the central tension, it's difficult to counterattack in the centre, and, and often you will get hacked. But I had the idea of keeping my king in the centre, and trying to get a very fast, accelerated, you know, attack on the queen side. So I immediately played b5, and try and put the plan into action, you know, for b4. So he tried to slow that down, but I'm not sure a3 is that great. So I played bishop b7, and the castle's a5, so I'm not bothering to castle. Just going for a fast queenside attack. So knight you want and now b4 straight away. And again, I'm not sure this is this is great for white to take on b4. Because he's playing where you know I have the advantage on the queen side. But um here I I think you know when I was looking with an engine last night, knight takes b4 is apparently a bit stronger than what I played, because it immediately threatened knight c2, and then if knight c2 I can invade on the light squares. Um so bishop takes b4, there's also an interesting resource for white, this bishop c3 he played, and it keeps his pawn chain solid. And if I ever take on c3, you know, I'm bringing that pawn to the center, so I'm removing his isolated pawn. So really, um, you know, maybe knight takes b4 would have been a better thing. So anyway, I keep my king in the center, and he does play for f4. So he's unblocked his f-pawn, and, and is going to strike at my pawn chain, so I try and do something about that with g6. So knight f3 and now h6 to stop these knight g5s. And my king's relatively safe. So even though I did seal up the tension of the position, um, I, I have got some prospects, I think, on the queen side. But white is doing okay at this stage. Uh, what I did sense was that uh, if I could get things off, I think things would be a bit weaker in white's position. Um, so I tried to get the, the rooks off soon. So first knight b4 though, and now getting the rooks off with bishop b7. And I just tried to nurture a, a small advantage here. So I took this bishop off here, the opportunity given to me, and even you know offered the exchange of queens, because I thought if I can get my knight to c4, or something to c4 later, this pawn would also be dangerous. So I was looking with a view for end game pressure, you know, uh, for, for slightly better pieces in the ending and this potentially dangerous pawn. But my main concern at the moment is not to lose it, so I have to play bishop a4 here. And now he's threatening again to win it, so I have to play knight c4, and even exchange off knights. So things are getting very simplified. It's just two bishops versus bishop and knight. Uh, so first, pl plan one is, is to get the king very aggressive. Um, so king c2, so I can get my king to c4. So it's a bit more aggressive than the white king. So the next plan is uh, now to do something about this bishop. This, this bishop's not now tied down to this pawn because the king's protecting it. So I realized that and I thought, hang on, I can reroute the bishop on this diagonal. So what I do is actually bishop e8 to be able to play f6, g5, and bishop g6 later. So now f6, g5. And the point of this now, so I take here, because I, I notice actually that d takes it would be bad news because of bishop b6 check. So if he has to take with the f pawn, that means my bishop is also less tied down now to, to g5 concerns. And I can finally get this bishop to g6. So I think I'm starting to increase my advantage slightly. So bishop c3, and now I play h5. So I'm also trying to put a squeeze potentially on these two pawns. But I've got to be careful not to play g4 because I don't want to give this knight the fantastic f4 square where it's hitting my pawn chain. 
Um, at the moment, h4 is a bit risky because of the bishop with d8. I could try and win a pawn. It, it might not be that great as a sacrifice. So he plays knight g1. And then I start to notice there's a problem with this knight and a potential zugzwang position that I could try and reach. If I've got a lot of pressure on d4 with a bishop on b6 attacking d4, then really, if I can force a zugzwang where the king has to move, then this is going to be a disaster for white. And in this respect, I try to now restrict the squares of this knight. So bishop e4, and now I play bishop b6, and now bishop g2. So all of a sudden, it's starting to become clear that this knight is running out of moves. He plays it to knight, knight e2, and now I play bishop f1. Knight g1, and of course it's got the f, f3 square now, so I put an end to that. I played g4, and um, now we've, we've reached this kind of zugzwang position, where it's difficult for white to do anything because of d4. So some of my earlier trumps you know, the more active king with this aggressive pawn, they, they've come into play here. Um, actually, I've, I've skimped on an important tactical uh, variation, which, which, which wasn't played, um, which is if if the king had gone back to f2. I, sh I should really note this. This is a very interesting variation. Bishop takes d4, uh, was pointed out by my opponent, that, why he didn't retreat his king. So takes... And now, in this position, instead of king e5, just king d3 here. And I think this knight can't swoop to the other side of the board in time. So say knight f3, king c2, and this ending will be winning because of this dangerous passed pawn. The knight's fairly helpless to stop that. So that, that's why he, he didn't retreat his king. And to be honest, I didn't see that variation at the time. I, was just, I just thought I was trying to squeeze this knight a bit. I was just thinking positioning. I wasn't... Yeah, if if that had come up, I would have tried to look at that. I guess that that uh, bishop sack on on g2. So anyway, that's that's why the knight really was stranded now after g4, and he plays h3, which doesn't really help too much because I take. So I'm threatening immediately h2. So he has to stop that, but he he is threatening here um, knight d2 check, but. Um, that's that's something. Yeah, I I can still you know lose the position because if the knight's on f1, then I can't move that pawn and I'm a piece down. So I've got to be wary about that. I play bishop g2, so I'm now threatening bishop f3 and bishop d4. So he blockades the pawn, but um, again this zugzwang effect is coming into play, and uh, I just play bishop a7, just saying you know well what are you going to play here? He plays this move g4, which is one of the only sort of moves to play. And I just simply now play h4 knowing that I've created this wall so his king can't come, you know, to, to g3 later, you know, you know uh, to attack this, this h pawn. Um, so he moves the pawn to g5 and I just block the pawn now. And again, it's going to be a tricky position uh, with Zugzwang soon. If he has to move the king, I'm going to go into d3. So he plays knight g4 and I just play bishop b6. And the problem is now, I'm actually threatening bishop d8, so I'm going to be attacking that pawn. So knight h2, bishop d8, so he does actually move his king. That means that I can now uh, get my king in. But before doing that, I don't want to allow <clears throat> king g4 to take this pawn. So I play bishop f5. And after knight f3, now I play king d3. And again, you know, he's in real trouble here. Um, if he doesn't do anything, I mean, I think there are various ways of winning the position now. If he just moves the knight backwards and forwards, um, I think I just move my king over here to support the move h2. So like this. Um, so eventually just supporting h2 just like that. So yeah, he, he had lost on time in that position though after king d3. But yeah, I thought it was a you know a long grueling <clears throat> game last night and um, Let's let's have a look in overview and summary. So so basically, um, I, this is a very controversial idea because um, it means I'm, I'm really playing for an end game advantage actually. So the outcome of this all this plan w was eventually to get a dangerous pawn on b3, which turned out to be a great asset. But um, it's a very long-winded you know strategy to try and win the game in in the end game basically. So getting the pieces off, just to try and weaken 
some square. So anyway, I got the C4 square a bit sooner than anticipated, but this this ending's not so clear at the moment that this this bishop is going to be great ever. So it's this this diagonal I'm playing for G5, which I think is the key to winning the position. Um, so it turned out it turned out to be a good plan, uh, a logical plan. So it started to put the squeeze basically on on the opponent's um, pieces, particularly that knight. Now was was kind of stranded on G1. So so I was winning this pawn, and now this 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 effect of the Zugzwang effect uh, because why it's so tied down to D4 helped um, you know win the game here, but um, he he lost the time anyway. Was, there's a time pressure coming in as well. So please leave any comments or questions on YouTube. Thanks very much.